Hello friends, in the last session we have discussed different methods for collecting primary and secondary data at the same time we have started discussion of classification of the data. Now in this part of the program we are going to discuss formation of continuous frequency distributions at the same time we discuss some technical terms which are used in this connection. Now in this part of the program I would like to discuss tabulations in which I would like to discuss different parts of the tabulation, types of the tabulation and significance of the tabulation. Then I would like to start the value of central tendency in which we will discuss how to calculate mean in case of individual discrete and continuous series. Now first of all I would like to discuss formation of continuous frequency distributions. Now whenever we have to form continuous frequency distribution definitely we have to discuss, we have to uh, take care of some technical terms which are used in this connection. The first is class limit. The two values which determine the limit of a group are called class limit. The lower limit is called lower value and upper limit is called upper value. In the case of uh, formation of continuous uh, frequency distribution, first of all we have to determine the class limit. Every class limit has got two values, lower value and upper value. For example, if we take out the example of uh, income limit, then we have to make the class limit say 10,000 to 20,000. Now 10,000 is considered as the lower value of the class limit at the same time 20,000 is regarded as upper value of the class limit. And second is magnitude of class interval. The difference between the upper and lower limit of a class group is called magnitude of the class interval. Whenever we form the class interval definitely we have to get the difference. For example, we take out the in example of income and definitely we have to have the magnitude of the class intervals so far as the income is concerned. For example, if you take out rupees 20,000 to 30,000. Now there is a difference of 10,000 between 20 and 30,000. Now 10,000 is regarded as magnitude of class interval. And next is mid value. The central place of a class group is called mid value or central value. Now so far as the mid point is concerned that is calculated on the basis of aggregate of lower limit and upper limit and that is divided by 2. So mid point is equal to L1 plus L2 divided by 2. L1 indicates lower limit and L2 indicates upper limit. The next is class interval number of items included in a particular class group or I can say that so far as magnitude of class interval and class interval is concerned both are the same because we have to find out how many numbers are taken into consideration in class interval. Now we discussed method of classifying the data according to the class intervals. Now in this connection there are two methods exclusive method and inclusive method. So far as exclusive method is concerned in this case upper limit of one class is the lower limit of the next class. For example, if you take out the example of income, if you have the class interval of rupees 20,000 to 30,000. Now 30,000 is the upper limit but that it becomes lower limit in the next class interval. But in case of inclusive method, the upper limit of one class is included in that class itself. Or we can say that in case of income group, if you take out rupees 20,000 to 30,000 then 30,000 will remain at the upper limit in the same class. Now we discuss the tabulation. A table is a systematic arrangement of statistical data in columns and rows. Now whenever information are collected in forms of numbers, now they are required to be presented in a very systematic manner and tabulation is one of the way by which information are presented. Now there are rows are horizontal arrangement whereas columns are vertical ones. Now we discuss what is the objective for preparation of tabulations. Presentation and to facilitate comparison. Now tabulation is required so as to present the information in a very systematic manner and that makes it possible for users of the information to have best use of the information as given in the tabulation. Now what are the significance of tabulation or we can say what are the importance of tabulation? First is simplify complex data. Whenever informations are collected they are not in a systematic way but so as to make it very 
useful. It is very important that information must be presented in a tabulation form that must be presented in a very simplified manner. And second is facilitate comparison. Once informations are presented in form of tabulation, then it helps a person who wants to use it to make the comparison. And third is give identity to data. When informations are given in tabulations, definitely every data has got its own identity and on that basis the investigator or the user of the information can use it in the desired manner. And next is reverse pattern. Now, tabulation also indicates in what pattern the information has been presented in the form of tabulation. Now, we discuss what are the parts of the tables. The first is table number, it means how many numbers are given in the tables that will be the part of the table. Uh, at the same time, we have to give the exact title of the table so that it may give the message to the user of the table as required for that purpose. And third is captions are also given step, body and footnotes. So far the footnotes are given, they are given in reference to the informations which are given in the tabulations because they are very much essential so as to give more clarification in the respect of informations which are given in the tabulation. Now we discuss what are the types of the tables. First is on the basis of the purpose. First is general purpose table or it is also regarded as reference table. It is comprehensive table annexed with the report. In case of general purpose table that is also enclosed with the report and that is for the general purpose table or we can say this is considered as the census of the population report. Whenever informations are given in a general way and that is given along with the report then that table is regarded as general purpose table. And second is special purpose table. When informations are given for a specific purpose, then definitely table is regarded as a special purpose table or summary table. It is prepared with the help of general purpose table. Unnecessary data are left and reorganized the detailed information in brief form. And second is on the basis of the origin. First is original or primary data. It contains data in the same way in which they are originally collected. Now, in this case, what are the informations are collected by the investigator? They are presented in the same way in the table. In this case, that table is considered as original or primary table. And second is derivative table. It presents totals, averages, ratios and coefficient derived from the original data. Now, in this case, those informations which are collected, of course, they are supplied in the table at the same time. Some more informations are collected or we can say these informations are calculated on the basis of the informations which are given in form of table or we can say the investigator we find out the totals at the same time he we may cal uh, calculate averages, ratios if, if it is required that is also given in this type of the table. Now third is on the basis of the construction. First is simple or one way table. Collected data are presented according to one characteristics. Whenever any table that contains one attributes and character, then that table is regarded as simple or one way. For example, if you want to supply the information regarding population of the different district of the state, then this table will be considered as simple or one way table because we find only one information in respect of population. And second is complex table. It reveals more than one characteristics of data. Now, in this case, there is double or two way table. Whenever any table that contains two or more than we can say two characteristics, then this table is regarded as double or two way table. For example, if we give the information regarding population of the district of the same state, at the same time, we provide the information in respect of different age uh, income group of the people in the district of the state then definitely we have got two characteristics in the same table. And third is triple or three way table. Any table that contains three characteristics or attributes, then that table is regarded as triple or three way table. And fourth is manifold table. Now this type of the table contains variety of the informations in respect of the information collected by the investigator. The construction of a good table depends upon the ability and common sense of the institution. It means there is no hard and fast rules how to prepare the table very effectively. 
it largely depends upon the ability of the investigator and common sense of the investigator how to prepare the table more effectively. In this connection, it is rightly said by Dr. Baule, in collection and tabulation, common sense is the chief requisite and experience the chief teacher. So, we can say that there is no hard and fast rules and principles how to prepare the table very effectively. In this connection, common sense and ability of the investigator work very, we can say, significantly. Now, after discussing how to prepare the table, what are the types and significance of the table, now we switch over to measures of central tendency. An average is a single value that represents a group value. It depicts the characteristics of the whole group. It is often referred to as a measure of central tendency. Now, in respect of uh, we can say central tendency, whenever information are collected and information so collected are divided by the numbers then we get the average. That average represents the entire we can say group value and this is the common value that we calculate on the basis of the information collected and divided by the number. Now, we discuss types of the averages. The first is arithmetic mean in which we will be discussing what is simple arithmetic mean, weighted arithmetic mean, then we discuss median, mode, geometric mean and harmonic mean. Now, first of all, we discuss how to calculate arithmetic mean in case of individual discrete and continuous series. Now, figures obtained by dividing the sum value of all items by their numbers. Now, so far as the arithmetic mean is concerned that is calculated in a very simplest way, we just calculate uh, uh, we can say different values and that is divided by the number in this way we calculate arithmetic mean. For example, we take out the uh, information regarding heights of the students in the class and that is divided by the number of the students in the class, then we calculate average mean or arithmetic mean. Now, how to calculate uh, arithmetic mean in case of individual series? Now, in this connection there are two methods, diet method and shortcut method. Now, first we discuss what is diet method. Now, in this case this formula is used for calculating arithmetic mean x that is uh, for mean and summation x means uh, we can say summation of item value and n that is stands for number or we can say that uh, summation x divided by n we calculate mean. For example, if we take out the different heights of the students in the class, aggregate height is divided by the number of the students in the class. In this way, we calculate average or arithmetic mean. Now, this method is used where the number of items are very small and the value are not in decimal points. So, this method will be used only when we get the informations in a very small way. At the same time, information so collected are not in decimal points. But uh, when informations are large and or we can say information so collected in decimal points, then this formula does not hold good. In this case, it is better that we should go for shortcut method. This method is very suitable where the number of items are large and value are given in decimal points. Now, these steps are required to be followed for calculating arithmetic mean under shortcut method. First is take an assumed mean, means we have to assume what is the mean, after that take the division of items from the assumed mean, after that we have to find out the divisions of the assumed mean, then obtain the sum of these divisions, then we apply this formula x that is stands for main mean and a for assumed mean and summation d means summation dx and that is divided by n. In this way, we calculate average mean. Now, in this case, the, this note is very important. The value of mean calculated by both the methods will be the same or we can say the arithmetic mean that we calculate under diet method or under shortcut method both will be the same. In case of discrete series, how to calculate mean. Now, in this connection this formula is used when we adopt diet method. X that is stands for mean and uh, f x means if we multiply value by the frequency and we have the aggregate then this is divided by the numbers. In this way we calculate uh, arithmetic mean under direct method. In case of short method this formula is used. First of all we have to assume the mean then we find the divisions 
then division is multiplied by the frequency then we have the aggregate and this aggregate is divided by n on numbers we calculate arithmetic mean. Now, this can be explained with the help of this example. Now, in this type of the example we have taken information regarding marks of the students and we calculate uh, arithmetic mean under diet method and sort method. Now, first we discuss diet method marks obtained is indicated by x and number of students is indicated by the f means frequency. Now, first of all we have to find out the summation of f x and for this purpose we have to multiply marks by the frequency on number of the students. In this way total f x is 2 4 6 0 and number of student is 60. But in case of shortcut method first of all we have to assume the mean. In this problem we have assumed 40 as assumed mean then we have to find out the deviations and deviation is calculated if we deduct assumed mean from the marks in this way first of all we calculate minus 20 because 40 is definitely more than 20. In this way we calculate deviations after that division is multiplied by the frequency then we calculate FD and summation of FD is 60 and this is calculated on the basis of aggregate of uh, total of minus and aggregate of total of plus. Now, in case of diet method this formula used for calculating arithmetic mean summation of fx is equal to 2460 2460 and that is divided by number say 60 in this way we calculate arithmetic mean is 40. But in case of short method since uh, 40 is the assumed mean and summation fd that is 60 and that is divided by again by 60 is equal to 40 plus 1 again arithmetic is 41. So, so far we have discussed how to measure arithmetic mean in case of individual and discrete series. Now, we discuss how to calculate arithmetic mean in case of continuous series. Again we have to discuss two methods which are applicable in respect of continuous series first is diet method and second is short method. Now, in case of diet method this formula used for calculating arithmetic mean x that is for again mean and summation f m is first of all we have to find out the mid value or mid point that is multiplied by the f then we have the aggregate of this multiplication and that is divided by numbers of frequency in this way we calculate arithmetic mean mid point that we definitely that is calculated on the basis of lower limit plus upper limit and that is divided by 2. In case of short method again we have to assume the mean in this formula a stands for assume mean then we have to find the deviations from the numbers then that is multiplied by the frequency then we have the aggregate and this aggregate is divided by the numbers of frequency in this way we calculate arithmetic mean. So, a that is for assume mean f stands the frequency of the each class dx is difference of midpoint and assume mean and the total frequency. Now, we discuss how to calculate arithmetic mean with the help of diet method and short method. Now, first we discuss the diet method marks obtained are given 0 to 10 means this class interval contains the marks starting from 0 to 10, but less than 10 because 10 is the low limit in the next class interval. And after that we have calculated midpoint, midpoint is calculated if we have the aggregate of load limit and upper limit and that is divided by 2. In this way we have calculated midpoint. The number of student as given in this problem is 5, 10, 25, 30, 20 and 10. Then we have to have the multiplication of midpoint and number of students then we calculate f m and that is 25, 150, 625, 1050, 900 and 550. In this way we have the total of f m that is 3300. But in case of short method again we have to assume mean that is 35. Now we have calculated already midpoint. Now on the basis of midpoint and assume mean we calculate deviations and deviation has been calculated on the basis of midpoint and assume mean. Then we have to multiply divisions by the number of student in this way we calculate f d x that is minus 150 minus 200 minus 250 then 0 
plus 200 and plus 200. In this way, we have got the summation of FTX that is minus 200. Now, we apply formula for calculating arithmetic mean. In case of that method, the formula is x is equal to summation fm upon n and that is 3300 is divided by 100 we calculate 33 as arithmetic mean under that method. Now, in case of shortcut method as we have assumed mean that is 35 plus minus 200 divided by 100 is equal to 35 minus 2 and that is 33. As I told you earlier that arithmetic mean that we calculate with the help of that method with the help of shortcut method will be the same. Dear friends, we have discussed so far how to calculate arithmetic mean in case of individual, discrete and continuous series. Now, we discuss weighted arithmetic mean. Arithmetic mean gives equal importance to all items. Now, this is one of the limitation of arithmetic mean because all the items are not having the same significance and importance. Therefore, we are required to assign some weights to the numbers so as to find out exact arithmetic mean. Now, second is, but in some cases relative importance of the different items is not the same. Therefore, we have to go for calculating weighted arithmetic mean. The term weight stands for the relative importance of the different items. Now, in this connection, this formula is used. X w means weighted arithmetic mean that is equal to summation w x means we multiply x by the weight and that is divided by number of weight in this way we calculate weighted arithmetic mean. Today in this part of the program we have resumed the discussion of classification of data in which we have discussed formation of continuous frequency distributions. In this connection we have also discussed some technical terms. After that we have discussed in a brief in a very precise manner the tabulations in which we have discussed significance, types of the tables and parts of the table. After that we have discussed central tendencies in which in this part of the program we have calculated so far arithmetic mean and weighted mean. Arithmetic mean has been calculated in individual, discrete and continuous series with the help of that method and shortcut method. Thank you.